The Avondale community is rocked by the news of McKinney's disappearance. We are making a plea to the community. Nine, if you know where this child is, we are making a plea. Please, please, send her back to her parents. Yes. Camille McKinney, lovingly called Cupcake by those who know her, has now been missing for over 24 hours. No mother should have to worry about, you know, her whereabouts of her three-year-old child. It's a shame that kids can't even come outside and play. Just have fun without wondering if somebody watching them or if somebody going to take them. April 22, 2016, the world would make way for Camille Cupcake McKinney. Camille is described as charming, cheerful. She was adventurous, but most of all, she was courageous. Her parents describe her as being tough as nails. She was a girl who, even at a young age, knew who she was. She would be brought into this world by her mother, April, and her father, Dominique. She also had an older brother. The date would be October 12th of 2019. Her mother would take her over to Tom Brown Village in order to attend a birthday party. Camille is here with her older brother, and she's playing with the other children, and everything seems okay. Shortly after bringing Camille and her brother to this party, her mother would leave and attend to a few duties. Now, when she returns a few hours later to retrieve her children, her son is there, but her daughter is nowhere to be found. At exactly 8.50 p.m. of that night, an official report would be filed with the police as to Camille Cupcake's whereabouts, and she's now officially considered missing. An Amber Alert would be issued. Bolos are in full effect, and everyone everywhere is searching for the little girl. Hi, everyone. We are back out here at the Tom Brown Village housing community where the search continues for missing three-year-old Camille Cupcake McKinney. She is still missing, been, out, been missing since Saturday night. As you all know, uh, they say that she was taken from a birthday party out here in this housing community. They have been uh, searching night and day for this little girl. Uh, it's been focused here on the in the Tom Brown Village housing community. We have the Birmingham police. They have their mobile command center set up. A lot of agencies working out of this mobile command center. Uh, just yesterday we saw, uh, in addition to Birmingham police, there was the FBI, uh, the uh, EM, Jefferson County EMA, the Shelby County Sheriff's Office was also out here assisting with this search. Other federal agencies I mean, it is all hands on deck, people trying to bring home this sweet little Camille Cupcake McKinney, three years old. I, can, I can't even imagine. The police are now scouring the town, looking high and low for Camille Cupcake McKinney. However, clues to her whereabouts are not in sight. With her being missing and no physical evidence to link to her whereabouts, skepticism was at an all time high. In the midst of this investigation, rumors were forming at the surface. Rumors that would force the parents to come out and address them head on. How are you feeling about the father right now? Well, right now, with the father, all that I can do is tell people to pray for him. I'm not going to bash him. I'm not going to talk bad about him. The way I feel right now, I mean, I, I really just don't know. One of the one of the most disturbing videos that I saw that I'm still trying to get over was people saying that they actually saw him with cupcake wrapped in a sheet. Have you heard that story? Yes, I saw it. You saw it. Okay. And do you, I mean like when you hear something like that, like how does that make you feel? Like don't doesn't that doesn't that seem a little real to you? It's very disturbing. But right now in this situation, it's really hard to tell who's lying and who's telling the truth because in a lot of situations I have seen some people be very supportive. I have seen some people switch over and be snarky. So in a lot of cases, you know, I do believe Birmingham Police Department will get down to the bottom of this and they will solve this case. October 13, 2019. 
would come and go and still no sign of Cupcake. October 14th, Crime Stoppers would announce a $1,000 reward, but regardless of their efforts, this reward leads to nowhere. Tips come in, but these tips can't be solidified. And at this point, the station really needs a break in the case because they have nothing. And then they receive a turn of events. There would be a guy who would be reported because he was at a gas station. He was at this gas station purchasing exactly $18.91 worth of candy. This man is at this shell station. He then sees two children and he tells the little girls that I'm looking for someone who looks like you. This incident would be reported to the officers and then they would release a few snapshots of the suspect and these snapshots would eventually yield results. The man in question would later be identified as 40-year-old Patrick Stallworth. This gas station encounter would eventually lead to a warrant being drawn up for his home. His home would be searched as well as his phone. After analyzing his phone, what they find would be nothing short of shocking, and he would eventually be locked up and held on $500,000 bail. But this gas station encounter wouldn't only lead to him being arrested, it would also cause him to be placed in the spotlight in the Camille Cupcake McKinney case. The police would be interviewing a few children who stayed in the area and who were around the day of the birthday party, and the children would detail a man that was there passing out candy. And the description of the man matches none other than Patrick Stallworth. So Patrick is questioned about Cupcake's whereabouts, and he says he has no idea what they're talking about. Now, Patrick wasn't the only one arrested. He would also be arrested with his girlfriend that night, Derek Brown. Derek Brown was a 30-year-old female who was currently out on bond for an incident that occurred in 2018. It would be that year that Derricka Brown would lose custody of her children. She would then go and kidnap them back at gunpoint. She would lead police on a high-speed chase. She would crash into a civilian vehicle as well as a government vehicle. Now, when the chase ends, no one is hurt, but she is taken into custody. She would post bond on these charges, and in 2019, she would be currently awaiting her trial process. So when they find out that her boyfriend is at a gas station buying candy and harassing underage girls, they immediately decide to revoke her bond because something isn't right here. So 40-year-old Patrick Stallworth and 30-year-old Derek Brown are in jail together and they are being pursued by the police about Camille's whereabouts. They don't offer any information. So we cry out tonight for Cupcake. We cry out for every person being held captive by a kidnapper. And we speak to you tonight to tell you, let him go! Jesus. Let him go! Let him go! Please let her go. She's a little kid. Yesterday around about 10 minutes to nine, I got a call and I got a call saying my daughter was missing, that she was attending the kids party. And I waited a few moments. I gave a little time, called back three minutes later and the police and the test was up here. And then that's when they said my daughter just looked at missing. For the most part, I just want my daughter back. I pay anything, I put up anything, anybody that know anything was going on. They know my daughter, everybody know me. They know Cupcake. You know anything going on, you know me, you know how I put up anything to bring that baby back home. I just really most important to get my baby back. Describe what overnight last night was for you. I'm sure you didn't get much sleep. Well, I ain't gonna get no sleep. I've been out all night. I look through everything around here, every empty school, every abandoned building, and I won't stop. I won't stop. It's going to be an all week thing. I got my own family. I got folks looking. I got folks looking right now. I got folks looking center point everywhere. But if anybody see anything, if anybody see cupcake, please bring me my cupcake back home. I'll do anything to get cupcake back. I do not want you to harm her. Please don't panic. Don't have any kind of hate in your heart to hurt that child. 
We're asking and we're begging and we're pleading for this child. And we know that God is going to work it out and put something in your heart to bring this baby home. The date is now October 17th. 2019, exactly five days after the disappearance of Camille Cupcake McKinney. There's a couple of people of interest in custody, however her whereabouts are still unknown. Six days after the disappearance of Camille, surveillance footage would be released with her inside of it. In this surveillance, a guy walks by, he drops candy, and then he stops and he talks to the children. And then shortly after, he's seen walking off with the child. At the time of the surveillance camera's release, it couldn't be determined who this guy was in the footage, although they did have an idea. October 18th comes and goes. Derek and Patrick are still locked up. Neither one of them are talking. The 19th comes and goes. Still no sign of cupcake. 20th comes and then the 21st. But by the 21st of October, something miraculous would happen. Derek Brown would come forward and tell her account of what happened. Now, I don't know what exactly prompted her to come forward, but I would like to think that 40-year-old Patrick Stallworth posting $500,000 bail just a couple of days prior to her confession played a big role in it. The guy who got her into this mess is now walking the streets free, and she's locked up. So now it's time to tell it all. She would tell the police that she came home and Patrick Stallworth had Camille, she then went to sleep and then she woke up a few hours later and she saw Patrick violating the child. Even though she saw this, she went back to sleep. She then woke up the next morning and she details that she noticed that Camille was missing. She wasn't in sight anymore. She then details that Patrick came in the room and he was holding what looked like to be a heavy trash bag. He then asked her, where is the lighter fluid? He then grabbed the trash bag, left the house, and she never saw that trash bag nor Camille ever again. But the police aren't buying that story, so they press her even harder. They basically tell her that you're not about to give us this whole charade where you saw her and then in a blink of an eye she's gone and you don't know what happened to her. The way they saw it, if he's comfortable enough to perform these acts in front of you, then you know a little more than you're telling. So after they press her even further, she gives up a location. And once they get to that location, sadly, they find the body of Camille. Good evening. I wish I had all of you gathered here with good news. I wish I could share a high five with some other type of celebratory salutation, but I cannot. It happens not to be that type of press conference. Listen to me, beloved. Listen to me. If you didn't know it, if you don't know it by now, you gonna know it in a few minutes. I brought you here today because the Birmingham Police Department, along with the FBI, have located the remains of a three-year-old child who we believe to be Camille Cupcake McKenna. That Cupcake Camille Cupcake McKinney was an angel sent from heaven. Her remains were found inside of a dumpster and they were, they were recovered inside of a landfill here in Birmingham. Because what little baby that lived to be three years old can bring this whole city, this whole country, this whole world together except she was sent. We had been detaining all of the trash being collected from one area. And we found it this evening remains of a child that we believe to be Camille.
Murder case against Patrick Stallworth and Derek Brown moving along. The two accused of killing three year old Camille McKinney a, a month ago. They were in court earlier today.